I do. I think uh, I think one of two things is going to happen. We're either going to get some relief to the 11.7 or the uh, restrictions on NIL, which depending on what state you live in, kind of dictate you know, what your institutions in those states can do from an NIL standpoint and NIL for all the kids that don't know it's name, image, and likeness. It's a, it's a way to, um, you know, participate in a, in a collective or get additional money for, for college baseball coaches. You know, everyone hears NIL and they think pay for play and it sounds a little bit slimy and below the line. I think if, if this pen was a magic wand and I could just, you know, wave the magic wand it would be to kind of erase the the what college baseball for a long time has been synonymous with student loan debt. And if you played college baseball, you took out student loans. And I up. think if, if you could wave the magic wand, it would be to use NL, use NIL to subsidize your cost of attendance for all your family, so that every kid on your roster could choose the school that they wanted to choose based on where they wanted to go not because another school offered them a few more thousand dollars. So it, it would be great to have NIL be the vehicle that got us to be more like a headcount sport, like a football or basketball, instead of an equivalency sport, which we are right now dealing with small percentages, 25%, 30%, 50% scholarships. Uh, I do think, I do think Walter, that, that it's all going to improve in time. It feels like that's the direction that everything is heading is to benefit the student athlete. Um, they just can't get here fast enough.